Hello, my name is Kurt Gibson, and I'm the Associate Executive Director of the Illinois High School Association. This brief video is to serve as an update to action taken by the IHSA Board of Directors at their April meeting regarding the Association's new Return to Play policy. The National Federation of State High School Associations, who writes the playing codes IHSA schools are governed by, implemented new concussion guidelines for all sports prior to the start of the current school year. These new Federation guidelines center around concussion recognition by coaches, officials, and game personnel and eliminate outdated language that had previously required a student athlete to be rendered unconscious before being removed from a contest. Beginning this year, student athletes removed from a contest for displaying signs, symptoms, or behaviors indicative of a possible concussion could only return to the same contest if they were cleared to return to do so by a physician licensed to practice medicine in all its branches in Illinois or a certified athletic trainer. However, the association had been lacking the return to play piece for those not authorized to return to the contest from which they were removed. And in tracking those instances this school year from special reports submitted to our office by contest officials, more than 75% of the student athletes removed from contests this year have not been able to return to that same contest. So it's clear to see that the development of such a policy will have an impact at IHSA member schools. This new policy, which was recommended by the IHSA Sports Medicine Advisory Committee and is available on the IHSA Sports Medicine website, requires students to have written clearance from a physician licensed to practice medicine in all its branches in Illinois or a certified athletic trainer who is working in conjunction with one of the aforementioned physician groups. As a result, it will be important that member schools are working with their coaching staffs to ensure that student athletes are getting the proper clearance before resuming their full athletic and possibly academic activity. Initially, the critical teaching point for players, coaches, administrators, and parents will focus on those situations when an athlete is removed from a contest for a possible concussion and he or she either is evaluated but not cleared to return to play in that contest by a licensed physician or a certified athletic trainer or he or she is not evaluated the day of the contest. In either of those scenarios the athlete will now be required to provide his or her school with written authorization from one of the defined professional groups that indicates the athlete can return to full play. As a result, coaches will need to make sure they are communicating with their administration when athletes are removed from contests for a possible concussion so that the administration can better monitor those students and prevent them from returning too soon. Over the past year, the IHSA has made concussion education materials available on its sports medicine website for schools, parents, and athletes. We will continue to provide those and help ensure the safety of student athletes in whatever fashion we can. In addition to the materials available on the IHSA Sports Medicine website, we strongly recommend that everyone take the course on concussions that has been developed by the NFHS. Entitled, Concussion in Sports, What You Need to Know, this course is a free, approximately 20-minute online offering available in the NFHS Learning Center. There's a link to that site off the IHSA homepage. It's an informative course that provides a concise overview on concussions and how schools and families can work together in managing this type of injury. And it's an offering we know you'll find useful. In closing, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. Anyone with additional questions can contact our office at the number listed below. Thank you.